Hi everyone, Emma here. I'm so excited to show you how to make this leather bracelet. This is a single wrap. We will work on some double wraps, triple, four and five wraps later on. I do have some videos out there showing you at least the double wrap anyway. So this one we can actually fit into one um, video and uh, get it all done and completed so i'm just showing you some of the ones i made already and i was kind of inspired a bit from the tierra cast uh, news that they are um, closing at the end of the year so i've stocked up on my tierra cast buttons and other uh, findings uh, they will be coming up soon um, within weeks so you'll see some pretty astounding <laughs> unboxings I thought I'd let you know now so and I also have one other surprise so normally I do um, barrel knots and we do have a uh, tube to do the barrel knots and um, it just a disclaimer before we start any of this stuff is I have a pretty extensive playlist of how to do leather bracelets so I talk about the thread I talk about um, the barrel tube I talk about all kinds of things if you're not familiar with doing leather bracelets that you could possibly like I learned this stuff from trial and error so if you're new to this by all means this I feel anybody can do just follow pause if you need to so let's go ahead you've seen you've seen what I have here now this one here is not a tiara cast this is just a, a button that I got online and the surprise that I wanted to show you is instead of doing a barrel knot, we're going to do this snake knot. So it looks really complicated, but it's actually pretty easy. So we're going to work through that. That's going to be one of our um, kind of uh, things for this video. I will do another video that's just the snake knot if you have problems following, but I think you should be able to follow it pretty good. So just give you an idea what it's going to look like at the end so these top ones are seven and a half inch this one's a little bit longer than seven and a half and then these ones here I think this one's a six um, inch it fits my wrist and then this one here is a five and a half inch and this one is for Maria from the Bronx so um, that's for you <laughs> so this will be going in the mail in a, a little bit once I get some other stuff put together so let's move these lovelies aside and let's talk about what you're gonna need you're gonna need two millimeter leather I'm gonna use black and we might as well cut it right now so for a seven and a half inch bracelet you're gonna need 50 inches of your two millimeter leather you will end up with two end pieces about this size which is probably let me get my ruler out let's see yeah so it's about five inches you're going to get two of these five inches left but you need them to make you need a little bit of length to make these using a barrel knot if you're not going to do that and you're going to end your bracelet here and maybe glue the little ends so that they don't pop out um, then you can cut 10 inches off your leather right away so use 40 inches instead of 50 but I'll tell you something I learned that it's better to use more leather than not and just you know leave these little pieces you can make beautiful earrings with them I can show you some videos and making earrings with your little pieces of leather but it will make your life so much easier and another big thing is you should buy a larger spool now I have a um, a 50 meter if you bought a 25 meter spool you would be fine this is where I get my leather it's exotica leather it's it's just called exotica.com but um, 
that's where I buy all my leather and uh, I think a this one might have been twenty dollars and the other is maybe ten I should have looked it up um, whatever the price is, oh I got it right here twenty for the fifty so a twenty five is only ten dollars so you can definitely afford a twenty five and um, yeah so let's go ahead and measure out 50 inches so we've got our ruler so we're gonna do 12 inches 24 inches 36 and 48 so that's four times your ruler plus two inches so you could essentially t leave out that two inches if you wanted to so that you would be using up less leather but again I just it's so much easier to do things when you have enough and it's so upsetting you if you get to the end of your leather your bracelet and you don't have enough leather for your closure it's very very sad <laughs> there's been a lot of tears so we have our leather we need a button. I'm using this beautiful Tierra Cass skull button. So I'm kind of going with the dark theme. And that's what the hole looks like. So this easily passes through. Now, just round out my end. I used scissors. You can use um, flush cutters, nippers, whatever you have. But you can see that goes on quite easily. So just bring your button to the midpoint so you have your two strands so we'll just put that aside and we'll get the other things we need you're going to need some six millimeter beads and let me because sometimes the six millimeter these are um semi-precious stones now this is supposed to be turquoise it's i probably synthetic or um there's another word they call when they use parts of something and then they add some other composite. But um, so these are super inexpensive, but they look lovely. So that will go nice with the with the black. But let me take a look. I think I counted 27 beads to create a seven and a half inch. So there's four, five, 10, 15, 20 two four five so we will take um i'll t i'll put 30 out and then we'll decide when we get to it here's the other thing with doing a wrap bracelet first of all if you can measure the person's wrist that's the best way to do it um and then as you're adding your beads be sure to measure it again and again i do this all the time and i still come up with a few of these bracelets i had to take like four or five beads off and i had just measured it so i mean I'm, i was watching tv when i was doing it never mind never mind so there's 30. And I'll tie that off so they don't get rolling all over the place. You are going to need some thread. And I do have a video on this type of thread. You can get it at Walmart or at your um, whatever fabric store and notion store that you have. This is upholstery thread. It's super strong. It will never break. And it won't, it, uh, won't wear out from use and wearing and stuff like that so that's why i picked this and it's super thin opposed to some of the like wax cord that you get and stuff like that it's really beautiful to have wax cord on a on a leather bracelet but it's really hard to get through holes so these holes i feel are a little bit bigger and you know these are super light i wonder if they're plastic or uh, let me see what they sound like. No, they're you can hear the sound, so there's kind of like a glassy sound to them. 
Okay, so a wingspan of this. You need your scissors and you're going to need a needle. I am just using a sewing needle. That's all you need for this. You need, and the reason being, you need something that has, I'm trying to find the eye here. There. I don't know if you can see that. You need something with a big eye for your thread to go through. Um, this, this is, um, you know, this, this may be a kind of knockoff, uh, beading needle that's supposed to be a size 10 because it it doesn't feel as thick as a beading or a sewing needle but so that's what you need to work with this let's actually thread this right now my hmm I think um, your eye will get compressed going through tight spots and I think that's what's happened with this needle. It looks a teeny, a little bit tinier than normal. There we go. So just bring it down a bit to, so that you don't lose your thread and go to the other side. Okay, the other thing you're going to need and I think I do this in another video, but I have a piece of um, waxed cord. And what I've done is I've just made a loop with it and then tied it at the bottom. And this is just, it gets knotted as you go because I use this over and over. We're going to use this to attach our leather and button to a beadboard. So whatever you're using, I use one of these here. This is a ring tray from Michaels. I take out the sponge and I throw in a bead mat and I have a video on that as well. It's super cheap. It's so much cheaper than a um, any kind of bead on it board and stuff like that. Um, the sides are nice and big a lot like wide so you can stack stuff in it and because this is hard you can actually stack these trays so I wait till they have a sale at Michael's and I think I probably have 10 of them and I stack them and I have like you can leave whatever you're working on on it and just put it away so if you don't have that you can use a clipboard you don't have to use anything at all it just makes life so much easier because then your leather's not moving around so let's get started the first thing we're going to do we've put on our button and we have our needle and thread ready we got our beads ready we are going to start with the snake knot so at this point you can put a barrel knot here and then um and then start adding your beads we're going to do the snake knot so you've got your two pieces here going to hang on to your work like this take the left hand side of your leather and you're going to loop it around and kind of pinch it here so if you look what I did was I did the loop and I brought the cord above itself like this then you're going to take the other side and you're going to put it through this hole so you could do it this way or you can just take the end and pop it through. So that's the kind of the first step. So there's your loop, bring your cord through and let me adjust this because we're going to like that. You're going to take your left side again and take the end, grab hold of the end. You're going to bring it around your right hand and th around the back of your work and if you take a look here we're going to put it through this slide it through this side of your cord and pull it through gently so what you see is 
kind of an infinity knot. I don't know if you can see that. Like that. And that's basically what you want. So now we're just going to pull the two ends till they're equal. And you want to bring your knot up to the edge of your button or right to the end. And I'll tell you my little trick is I always bring it to the end of the button so that when I wear my bracelet, my button will sit flush. If you put it right up to the shank, your button will stick sideways. So it will dig into your wrist and nobody will see your beautiful button. So I always leave it to the side. So as we're pulling these two sides down, you want to bring that knot up some more. So you can just kind of fiddle with it a bit. Bring it up, bring it up. Okay, so I'm going to hang on to that side. I'm going to pull this side down. And you can see it's starting to create a knot. And so just go from side to side. And this knot here, you're going to bring it relatively tight and I'll tell you why because there's space here so if you don't tighten that this part here will kind of open up a bit and it's probably not the look you're going for it'll still stay so and that's what I mean by tight just like that so now we're going to do another one so that's basically the step you're doing so it might be easier once you get your first one in I'll just let you decide about that. So take your right hand cord, make a loop in the upward position, pinch it, grab your left hand leather, always go under and through that loop that you've made, pull it through, then take this same cord, you don't have to change hands, Bring it around your hand. I'm going to do it all the way around here and put it through this hole at the back. So you're on the side of this cord, which is basically the cord you have. Then you're going to slide it down and you see it slides over my hand like that. Just don't let it slide over the button. There are other videos on how to do this. I found it very confusing. So um, I practiced this last night and tried to come up with a different way of doing it that makes it easier for people to understand with their hands. But I will say that any of these instructions, they only work well when you do it with them. So if you're just watching a video and think, oh, okay, I got it, and then turn it off. If you can do that, that's amazing. You're a genius. But you really have to go step by step with the video. So now I'm just tightening this, both ends. Depending on how soft and how rigid your leather is, is going to determine how tight you can get it. But also remember... The tightness will determine how big your um, your knots are. So, and then it's optional how many of these you put. So I did for the most part. I thought the sweet sweet spot. Well, the sweet spot I think is between three and four. So here's a three, and let me get a. Four. Here's a four. So actually, I think three is the sweet spot. But for this one here, because the button's so big and I didn't leave a lot, well, I guess you can see it. I was going to say you can't see the first knot, but you can. So that's your choice, What, how many you do. So we'll do one more. We're going to do this again at the end. So you can either stop it now and get your leather, you can do it with uh, rope as well, like shoelaces or something, practice. So take your right hand cord, make a loop in the up position, just pinch that. Take your 
left hand leather go through that loop from the back. That. And then take that same leather, go around your hand to the back and put it through the loop, but make sure you put it on the left side of this cord here and then pull it through letting it slide over your hand like that and then pull the other one and then you're going to cinch them both to the position that you want so he, this is another trick too if you don't have enough beads to make a full bracelet then you can add more of these knots to create a longer line of the the uh, snake knot and then you can also intersperse these within so you could do five beads and then do some snake knots five beads snake knots so that's another option too so that is what we have i think we're going to stick with the three so I'm going to make sure that that last one is nice and tight so it doesn't unravel, but it should be fine. So now you're going to take your leather and go to the bottom and create a loose knot in the bottom piece here. Just like that. Just enough so it doesn't come undone, but don't, you know, damage your leather by tightening super hard. This is just so we can attach this to the board. So that is what we're going to do. I'm going to slide this over a bit and get my board. So now I have my starting of my bracelet and I have my cord that I've tied a knot in the bottom. So I'm going to loop the button at the top like this. Okay. And I'm going to take the rest of my bracelet and I'm going to wrap it around doing it evenly so the right and the left side of your leather stays on the right and left and bring it underneath and over. So now we're going to go through this piece here that's tied and we're going to cinch it down like this. Okay. Now it's up to you how tight you make this. Um, my recommendation is make it a little bit loose. And the reason being is as we start to bead downwards, we're going to have to move this up and things like this part of the knot and your beads might get like damaged from the board so just wrap this around your button a few times and then come back up and just tie it in a knot here and you could put a slip knot makes it easier to get out so I'm just gonna hang on to that And just do it this way. Slip knot here. However you get it tied is your, and I didn't do a slip knot, but anyway. So there, we are set for that one. I am seriously going to move these guys. So now I have this guy at the top of my um, board. I'm going to move it down. It just makes it easier to work on. And that's what I mean when you have this way of doing it you could use like you know a thin box that kind of thing a shoe box like take the lid of the shoe box they're usually pretty sturdy and you could do the same thing with this to get it going so now we need our thread I'm going to take the end of the thread and I'm going to attach it to the left hand side of the leather now I am going to add quite a long piece of thread at the end and what we're going to do with that is when we're done the bracelet we are going to weave it in. This way there's no knots that you can see. So this is my trick 
to dealing with knots. So we're going to put that on snugly, but not like super tight that it cuts into the leather. Then add another knot. This one you can make tight. Okay. So now I'm going to take my first bead and I'm going to pass the tail through it. And again, this is this is for this trick of hiding your knots. So I'm going to put that tail through. Okay. So now I'm going to take my needle with my thread and I'm going to go through the left side of that bead like that. And I'm going to pull that one through. Just hang on to everything as it's going through. So now what we want to do is we're going to pop that down. And what that's going to do, we're going to turn it because we're going to secure it this way, is it's going to make the knot go to the middle of the leather and hide inside the bead. So let me enlarge this so you can see. It's a little better. Now your thread is going over the top of the right hand leather. Don't worry about your tail actually. If the tail gets in the way, take the tail and wrap it around your button like this for later. There, so now it's out of the way. Kind of. <laughs> so take your needle and thread. You're going over the right hand side. You're going to go underneath. And we're going to push this bead down a bit so that we can go through the bead, through it, and underneath the right hand side. And this is what we're going to do for the whole thing. We're going to go over, under, over, under, and that secures your bead very well. So pull that all the way through. This um, Thread is nylon thread, so you don't need to wax it. You might need to like pull it through your fingers to untwist it, but other than that, you're fine. So now pick up another six millimeter bead, bring it all the way down and over both sides of your leather. Grab onto your bead with your finger and index, your thumb and index finger. Go under the leather on the right side, through the bead, and under the left side. Take the tail here and hang on to it, and then pull everything. So now super loose, you don't want it like that. You take your thread and you can take your finger and just tighten that way so it gets this cord tight and then everything's in there so we'll just keep doing that and we can talk and measure at the same time so we're gonna add a bead put it over top both sides of your leather Go under your right hand leather, through the bead and under the left hand. Hang on to that thread and pull everything tight. Like that. There. Pick up another bead. So you can see this goes really fast once you get the hang of it. Go over both sides. Then go under the right side, through the bead, under the left side. Just like that. Pull that tight. Pick up a bead. Like that. Over, under, through, and pull it through. Like that. Pick up another. So I thought um, I'd 
tell you a little story. I have mentioned this in other videos, but I thought I'd mention again. So the idea was I was going to do a men's bracelet and um, yeah, I'll just tell you the story. So I, um, when I was uh, I'm thinking I was in nursing school, I um, made, it was Christmas and I wrapped gifts for Christmas in um, newspaper comics, which is hilarious because newspapers are nearly dead now. <laughs> And I bought these strands of like plastic pearls from the dollar store and I used them to wrap the gifts in and it was for my nieces and nephews. Now that they were five and six maybe. And uh, anyway, they, they opened their gifts. They were so excited and then they wanted to play with the pearls. So what I did was I, um, tied the end into a knot to make it a, into a necklace and uh, my nephew wanted his too so he had his and um, I find out from my sister later on that when he was going back to school he came downstairs and he was wearing his pearls that Aunt Emma made him and he was six years old and she explained to him that he couldn't wear them to school because other kids might make fun of him. And oh my gosh, it broke my heart. So I have always had a soft spot for making men's bracelets. And here's another story. I went to a Christmas party. Maybe it was a New Year's. Yeah, New Year's party that was put on by somebody... Um, that we, a friend that we knew in the queer community, and it was all going to be, um, I'm pretty sure everybody there was from the queer community. So anyway, we had to bring two gifts. We were doing that like Kris Kringle exchange where, you know, you roll a dice and if you get doubles, you pick a present, you unwrap it, and then you the next time around, like the next person that goes can either pick a new gift or take the one you have. So of course, those parties, usually it's um, alcohol that's popular. When it got to my bracelets, I made men's bracelets. When it got to my bracelets, people were giving up bottles of whiskey and stealing the bracelets. So... Guys like to wear bracelets too. Doesn't matter who you are. And the way I look at it, you should be allowed to wear whatever you want. Who cares, right? So that's why I always... And unfortunately, the, the market for findings for men's bracelets are hard to find so that's why I tend to lean towards leather bracelets like some of the uh, really nice you know the anchor bracelets like this one here this anchor bracelet which is a hit here for sure but, so yeah so we got a bunch done here. So my experience, if you're using these Michaels trays for a seven and a half inch bracelet, it's um, it's almost the width of the tray. But like I said, just make sure you um, measure, measure, measure. Somebody mentioned in one of my last videos, I think it was part of the live, um, that it would have been nice to have come across my channel earlier to talk about what to buy as a, a beginner because I know myself, I bought stuff that I never did use and that was what she was suggesting that 
it would have been nice to to get a heads up if you have any questions please by all means ask me even if it's not on the topic of that video and here's the thing i have over a thousand videos so if you watch one that's like three years old and there's something interesting in it and you comment and ask a question i may not get the the notification so you're better off to go to my most current video and comment on it say i was watching such and such you don't even have to say that just ask the question i'm always really open to uh, responding that's why i do this like i really enjoy it so i want to i want other people to have the same experience as me of enjoying stuff beads we love them <laughs> So I think I, I kind of like the blue color with the um, the black, but it would be nice if like the veins were darker. But now I'm now I'm nit nitpicking here. So I have my next BB Craft um, unboxing is going to be related to leather bracelets. So that'll be fun. But the big thing was the um, Tiracast clothing. I thought it's time to do some stuff with these lovely buttons. <laughs> Actually, I, I have a confession to make. I'm making room for the new stuff coming. I placed a knee-jerk reaction. I, I got the information from Jill Wiseman's newsletter. So I went ahead to her site and I ordered a very large order of Tierra Cast findings. And then, I don't know, somebody mentioned something about art beads to me. So I went and checked art beads and I was like, oh, um, why didn't I check art beads first? They, they're say, they had a sale on. So... I have two massive, massive orders of Tierra Cast coming. And then, what is the... Oh, I did a, um, a large order with the Northern Bead Company as well. There, that one is uh, a lot of super duos. I did a price um, comparison for super duos. And if you're in Canada, the two cheapest places I found is the Northern Bead Company. And they now have a um, customer appreciation, uh, like, uh, points. So that's good. And you get free shipping after a certain amount. But their Super Duo prices are really good. So there's them. And then there's Michael's when they have like a 30-40% off coupon that's the time to get their super drugos like I would probably stick with like the silver and the golds although they do sell out pretty quickly of those but there so I'm going to measure this and let me see if you can see this so you can see it's almost to the whole board I suspect we need to do more but when you're measuring as you're putting your beads on remember depending on how many knots you put on so if you put three here I would recommend you put three down here measure this this is about an inch uh, about a half an inch so let me just check yeah it's a half an inch and you're going to measure from the top of that knot because once your button goes on your button is overlapping the other piece of the bracelet. So you don't want to measure that. You could measure from here, but then don't measure your opening. It might give you your quarter inch that you should put in anyway for somebody's wrist to make it slightly loose so it's not tight, tight. So we've got, this is uh, six and a half. So I need... Let me see what a half 
measures is three beads. So I'm going to put enough on here to give me seven inches total and then my knots will be my half inch to seven and a half. So that's what we'll do here. So let's get this showing you. Let's get our next bead on. Like I said before, you can use wax cotton. It's usually one millimeter. Is it one? One millimeter thick, um, which is quite a bit thicker than this thread. You will have problems getting through these holes. Um, you might get your two passes because we're actually going through the bead twice. If you see, we come down, we go through, then we come back around. Um, you probably get your two passes in there, but when you go to put your knots and stuff, you can't hide them inside the bead. So, and then the other part to that is that thread will fray over time. So by all means, if you manage to do it and uh, want to share your technique, let us know because I think it looks so amazing when you have like that cotton thread is flat and it wraps around, it looks really cool, but it will frustrate you to no end and you won't have the longevity. It gets dirty because it's sticky, it's got wax on it. But, uh, here's another tip, if you're doing bracelets, if you have um, natural leather, and I'll show you an example, that bead looks smaller. I'm going to take that out. Sometimes you get a tiny bead. Let me see if I've got that. Let me untangle this. Yeah, I was pretty sure my thread went around twice. Um, so just put that one aside. Ooh, look at this nice one with all the veining. Okay, so let me show you some leathers here. So when I say natural, these here are natural, but they're dyed. They have a bit of a, a finish on them um, when they do them. Now they're not shiny. That's a totally different one. Shiny is painted on. And I'll do a information video on different leathers. But the next step from this is they have one and these are polished is what I guess what so it has a bit of a smooth surface there's some leather that's not polished like that it's really beautiful but my experience is it gets dirty and it looks horrible it's just your the oils from your hands from your wrist whatever and then you're stuck with this bracelet so this is the last one and I'll show you there's a technique to finishing so make sure that's on nice and tight there okay so we are at the end what we want to do is we want to go back up a few beads and put a knot and hide it in one of those beads so we're going to start with the bottom one because that's where our threads coming out of so I'm going to go over top because we're now underneath. I'm going to go over top. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my needle out underneath the right hand like this. Okay, so I'm going over top this leather under this one. Just hang on to that so that it stays tight and just make sure everything's tight there so we're going to start with our first knot what we're going to do is we're going to take our needle and we're going to slide it in between the bead and the leather and underneath that thread right there like that 
Okay, we're going to take our thread and kind of hold your needle as close to your bead as possible. We're going to wrap. I'm going to put this through so I can get there. Wrap that around the needle and bring it back down. Put your finger on it and push your needle through, holding that little loop. Bring everything through and tight. So there's your knot right there. Now we want to put it in this bead. So we're going to go through over top both pieces of leather like this. Okay, bring it through. So it's still up top. We want it to go into the bead. So we're going to pull it as much as we can. And sometimes it doesn't go all the way through. So just bring your nail there. And that's good enough. As long as it's secure, it's pretty dark. So you can't see it. And it's not that big. It's hard for you to see. So now our next step is... What we're doing is we are following the thread path. So this thread path goes over the leather and then under on an angle up to the next bead. So we are going to go to the next bead. There we're in. So we're under the leather there. We are going to go under the leather on the other side, like that, but through that bead. Bring that tight. Now we're going to do our second knot. So we're going to do the same as what we did before. We're going to put our needle th between the bead and the leather under that thread bridge. Then wrap your thread around it, bring it down. Put your finger on it, push the needle through while you're holding that loop and tighten. Then we're going to go through here, through the top, come out through the top of the next one. To my end of my thread there. Okay, so there's your knot. I don't know if you can see that. And just get it. And pulling it through tightens it as well, so it's pretty secure. So now we can clip this. That's oh, not going anywhere. Now, be super careful when you're cutting. I have cut my other threads when I'm cutting this off. So this one's done. Just toss that extra thread. Let's go to the top thread. Remember, we put it aside. So we're going to take this. We're going to basically do the same thing, only we're going to do it in reverse. You can flip your, um, your board if it's easier for you. But then you end up working on your left side. So I find that a little bit awkward without practice. So I'm going to thread this tail. Yeah, this, this needle head eye is getting compressed. So here's the reason why I say to add a long piece, because this is so short that it makes it a little iffy about going through. Anyway, so we already have a knot on this side here. We What we can do is we can take our thread and go down through the uh, your work here and pop that to the bottom now we can put a knot in here so do the same thing we did down at the bottom we're going to slide this be careful the needles are sharp and they will go right through your leather and because the leather is like a light tan color underneath it will show up this one's a little sketch, actually. Let's see if I can get it close to 
that feels like it's going through the leather. I think it did. We should be fine. So wrap it around once. Bring that. Put your finger there. And I'll get my... Let's see if I can use these. There. Hang on to that. Pull. There. Perfect. Now there's our knot. We are going to go through the go over top and through that bead and then go under on the other side like that pull it through and let's try and there so that one snapped in place you can feel it go through so at this point I'm pretty sure that's secure you don't have to do anything more you can then take this and go through this bead Go through this one, come out through the bottom, and then put another knot there. I'm not going to bother. I think we're good. So now let's just, again, just be careful cutting your thread. There is a little bit sticking out, but it will hide in the bead eventually. So now we can take this off the board. This is how simple it is. Take that out, unwrap this. Pull that out and take your button off like that. And we can get rid of our tray. So this is what we have so far. We don't need these things. There. So let's take the knot out of here. And you can just bring it between your fingers to straighten it out. And let's measure this again. Now that I think a bit. So there. There. So it's just past the seven, which is perfect. Now we're just going to do three snake knots at the bottom. That'll give us our seven and a half inches. It might be slightly bigger, which will make it nice so that it's not like super tight on somebody. So let's uh, take a look closer here. We're going to do the sneak knot. So we're going to do a few of them. This will be practice. Take your right hand cord, make a loop in the up position, pinch that. Take your left hand cord from the back, put it through the loop like that. Then bring this around your hand and around the back of your work through the loop here. And let that leather slide over your hand like this. You have that little infinity knot looking thing. And you're going to bring this one as close as you want to your final bead. I wouldn't put it like too close because you might be nudging your threads and stuff like that. But you want it in there. So this one needs to tighten and then this one. Let's get these guys in here. There. Like that. Super. Okay, one more time. Your right hand into a loop from the like going over the top. Like that pinch it. Take your left hand cord, bring it through the back, through the loop all the way. Then take that over around your hand to the back and you want it on the left side of this cord. So through the back, make sure it's on the left side of this cord. Slide it through and you see it easily comes around. And then just start bringing those ends in like that. Tighten. 
and do it one more time. That'll give us our seven and a half inches. Loop around towards the top. Take your left hand cord and put it through the loop all the way. Then bring it around to the back and go next to that cord there and through the loop like that through here. Let that slide over your hand, pull all the way down, and we have our third knot. Let's tighten that. So this one here, you want to make sure that it's snug because now we're going to put our buttonhole right here. So if it's um if it's loose and it comes loose, your hole will get smaller. So now I'm just going to pinch this here. I'm going to bring my button around and I'm going to measure. So this, this button is kind of small, so you don't need a big hole. Depending on how you like to wear your bracelets, I would suggest this size hole for this button, but you can see it easily goes in and out. If you're concerned about it, um, coming out on its own, then you might make it a bit smaller. Maybe there. There, that should do it. So, kind of eyeball, that's where you want it. You're going to hang on to that so you know. You're going to take your right hand cord, make your loop, and pinch it in the area. We will be measuring, measuring the button again before we tighten everything, so don't worry. So, hang on to that. Take your left hand cord and put it through the loop from the back all the way. Then go around the back and put it through the loop from the back but on the left side of this cord. Then you're going to let that, you're going to pull on that loop and it's going to loosen around your hand like this, like that. And I am just going to put my thumb there to give me an idea. And I'm pulling my cords tight. Like that. Let me check my button. So that fits nicely. So let's tighten this one and then that one. And just bring it down a bit to do it. Perfect. So this slides in nicely. So let's tighten this one. Again, this is an important one so that this one and this one doesn't loosen and, you know, affect your buttonhole. So there, perfect. And don't forget, leather stretches. So if you think, oh, I made it too tight, not to worry, it will loosen over time. So we're going to put a couple of snake knots here and we'll finish off. So we're going to take our right hand side, loop it over itself in the top up position take the right and left hand side go through the loop from the back then go around your hand to the back of your work put the tail in through the loop off to the side of that cord and then draw in both sides that side and then that side like that so there's two um, I haven't decided what is the best design for whether I want two or three at the end I think one more so we can actually do it here so take your right hand, make a loop over top of itself. Take the left hand side, go through the back of the loop, pull it through, go around the back and bring your tail through the loop. Make sure it's between the loop and this piece here. Then we can 
draw everything tight and that will give us our final knot like that and again the final knot you want to make sure that it's snug so pull it a little harder like that I'm just going to open this because I sorry I was at a frame so now you can see Here's my bracelet. This is what I have left of leather. So you could actually easily take, I would take six inches off. It's up to you. I'm going to show you the difficult part and the reason why we leave a bit of a tail. So you can finish this here. You can cut these and um, put some glue in there so that it doesn't come apart. I really... I feel like if you're making a leather bracelet, it's because you like things that are organic. I don't want to add glue. So I want to create knots that will keep things in place. So unfortunately, to end it, we have to add a bit of a tassel and some knots. So if your bracelet ever comes apart, you can having that extra leather might help to fix things. So we're going to take our uh, barrel knot. We're going to slide it up against our cord, doesn't matter which side, and we're going to wrap it around once, twice, like that, and then we're going to take, you're going to hold it with your fingers, take and put the tail end of it through the barrel tube, switch fingers, holding on to your loops and again holding on till you get that through this is what you're going to have you want to kind of wiggle it into place so that it's tight there this one you have to get really tight because it's the end of your leather you don't want it to come off now we're going to do one on this side. You can do them the same length or you can do one longer or shorter than the other. It's up to you. I prefer the staggered look of one longer than the other. So we're going to take our tube and we are, here is a trick. If you want your loops to look like this when they're finished, um, you have to do this one. I think we came from the bottom this one will go from the top down and what that'll do is it'll place this part of the knot there because look at what the other side is it's an x so it's up to you it's like that's really really picky stuff but you know what i'm like i'm very picky <laughs> so we say we'll come from the top ah, okay so i think that one we did this way so we're going to go this way one two hang on to that put your end through the barrel knot these tubes i got on ebay years and years ago and when i got them they were tarnished i paid maybe paid two dollars for them i did a dispute they gave me my money back i have been using them for tubes since barrel knot tubes um, if you've ever gotten something from me you probably got one in there <laughs> and uh, yeah so there it doesn't matter what length they are just make sure the inner part of it measures enough to get your cord through so I'm using two millimeter cord and that's what I use exclusively I have some thicker cord that I use for different styles but for leather wrap bracelets I would definitely do the two millimeter I know a lot of people do 1.5 I don't understand it it's just a hassle to work with and it's not it's not cheaper in the long run as far as I'm concerned but again if it's your if you've got something really cool going don't don't listen to me I don't know what I'm talking about so that one is quite a bit longer. Let me see if I can kind of jiggle that back up. It's 
to be careful at this point too. I can see some of that polish coming off of this one as I'm messing with it. So get that nice and long. There, that's better. Now we're going to cut these. So you can cut these with your scissors or your um, whatever cutters you're using. These scissors, they're they work really well. So I cut it pretty close to the knots like that. And you can take a marker and color that in and you'll never know. There's a, there, like that. I might have one close by. Oh, I have my brown one. Oh, I do have one. Look at that Sharpie marker. If I had like a leather dye, I'd use that, but this is pretty simple. There we go. So this is what we have. This is lovely. And this last knot looks a little loose. You see? Yeah. It's fine. So there is this awesome bracelet. So thanks for joining me. I hope you found that helpful. I'm actually pretty impressed that this only took an hour and 10 minutes or five minutes. So there you go. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll be doing some more of this and I'll be doing some lives with leather so that you can ask directly and get, you know, a real time response kind of thing. So there we go. Thanks for joining me. Bye.